The bowl is not done yet. I'd like to call this Parks and Recreation Advisory Commission meeting uh, for May the 1st, 2018, to order. Uh, Chairman Robert Uh Announcements are, is this me in uh, compliance with the meeting? Uh, yes, it is. Can we take a roll? Chair White. Here. Vice Chair Schultz. Present. Commissioner McCurdy. Here. Commissioner Becker. Here. Commissioner Dobre. Here. Uh, Commissioner Snyder. Currently excused. Commissioner Lozano. Here. Commissioner Breyer. Excused. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Commissioner Howard. Here. Commissioner Fennell. Here. Um, Commissioner Sherman. Acre, Armenian, Henley, and Aslan are all excused. We do have a Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to item number three. Public comment. Public comment during the portion of the agenda. Must be limited to matters on the agenda for if you wish to be heard, give your name for the record. The amount of discussion as well as the amount of time you see the speakers allow may be limited. Is there anyone here for the public comment? Hearing no one, we'll move on to item number four. For possible action to approve final minutes by reference of regular meeting of April the 3rd, 2018. So, second. Move and second. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, moving on to item number five. Report by the Department of Public Safety regarding issues of the city facilities and parks all over. Please state your name. Good evening, Officer McGregor. Uh, the monthly report for uh, Deputy Marshal Unit we had a total of 1,002 total events. 561 of them were initiated in the field by officers, with uh, the top three locations being uh, Freedom Park, 100 Circle, and Renzi Park. Our average dispatch time was less than 10 minutes. We had a total of 77 arrests, 100 citations, and 71 warning citations with 118 incident reports taken. Ward 3 had the most arrests with 42, and Ward 5 was second with 24. Wow. <laughs> um, as far as citations, uh, Ward 3 had the most with 47 citations, and Ward 5 with 33. Different events that our unit was involved in, this month was uh, Officer Busey was assigned to the mayor detail uh, at Red Rock Elementary. Officer Brown was assigned to provide presence at the parking hearings. Marshals provided presence at the neighborhood watch meeting at Hunter's Circle. The neighborhood watch program was organized to deal with the park and not the actual neighborhood. Um, on uh, April 21st, officer presence provided for uh, Councilman Fiore's shredding event at Desert Shores Clubhouse. April 25th, marshals alongside with Lieutenant Adams, Sergeant Major, and the MACTAC members provided officer presence for federal dignitary detail where the city manager was also in attendance. I believe uh, Ben Carson was the dignitary there. Also, uh, April 26th, marshals assisted and conducted Stranger Danger presentations for the Bring Your Kids to Work Day event at City Hall, the Department of Public Safety Administration Building, and the Development Services Center. Mar April 27th, marshals participated in School Career Day at Ernest May Elementary. Officers did displayed the department patrol cars and Enduro motorcycles. And the deputy city marshals continue to assist with the MORE team and provide security for rapid response cleanup efforts in the homeless corridor alongside the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. With auto burglaries, we had one at Freedom Park, two at the Oasis lot, which is located on Las Vegas Boulevard in Ogden, and one at the Las Vegas Library parking lot. We've recently added a position in, on Fremont Street in the video room 
Um, we have an officer that's on light duty watching the video feed, calling out when he sees crimes and uh, pulling the tape for evidence. So next month we'll have some reports on how that's impacting our stats. Any questions? Any questions? Yes, sir. Hey, Gregor. Commissioner McCurdy, the chairman. Um, a lot of arrests being made in Doolittle. Are we making a lot of arrests for drugs? We've been having some issues in there. We've had a number of calls with uh, young people running through with guns. We had a gunfight run through there uh, about four days ago. They jumped the wall into the apartment buildings. Well, I just hope that they uh, get a little bit more aggressive in uh, enforcement of the uh, laws because I go in and I'll be smelling marijuana about to drive me crazy. And uh, I'm hoping something you can do to uh, take care of all parks. People seem to assume that they have the right to smoke marijuana in public parks. Which the law is not designed to smoke pot in public parks. You're correct. Uh, so therefore, I'm hoping that the city will take an overall aggressive action on people smoking marijuana in public parks. Yes, sir. I'll make sure my sergeant's aware of it. But um, when we catch them, we do enforce the law. It's just a lot of times the odor, especially the way that's set up, could be coming over the fence from the apartments. But I doubt it. <laughs> no, I, mean, I mean, I see them walking around and do the, with the little. We may end up having to do a, an undercover operation because you show up in uniform and everything goes away. But. Yeah. I'm hoping that. Especially, uh, I, I noticed the same thing in uh, the Renzi Park. I noticed them in, you know, some of uh, the children's parks to get, get mad and get in uh, Bertha Johnson. So I'm just hoping that there's something to be done that we can do something. Even I'm going to try to talk to the legislature so we can get something done because it is just driving our young people crazy because their parents go to the park and they bring in the marijuana with and they sit and consume it. And they don't realize that this is a lot of contributing to the fire to the marijuana. Yes, sir. Um, thank you, Commissioner. Um, Chairman White, if I'm recalling correctly, didn't we talk about something about an enhancing the signs or uh, didn't we bring something like that up at some point or another when the, when the legalities were um, talked about? I know it's always been illegal to smoke it anywhere but at your residence if you're of age and can smoke it. Um, I don't recall the sign part. But I think that. MA, Director Hacker. Um, we were waiting for, I guess, some more clarification from both working with uh, DPS and our city attorney's office. Uh, but yeah, uh, smoking is basically prohibited within. 50 feet. 50 feet of any children's play area, so that covers most of our areas within our parks. And that's cigarettes. That's cigarettes. Um, you can't smoke marijuana other than at your residence. I, I realize. I'm just saying the clarification. Smoking <laughs> can't smoke in the car. But a lot of people do it anyway. And, no, no, yeah. and, and I apologize. I'm thinking from a marketing standpoint and or a awareness standpoint, something that says, I mean, this may be uh, humorous, but if you're reading this, you're high and you're getting, you will be arrested. You know, something, something that says you, that draws their attention. It's, it's something other than, hey, NRS, blah, 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 pulls it out, puts it current. Um, and it's, it's tough for me even to say that because it's against the law and people should know this and have some type of new care. Um, so, there you go. Mr. Chairman, can I ask this department here a question? Is it, why can't we print it on the recreation annual or quarterly books that smoking marijuana in public facilities or consuming alcohol or all of this is against, you know, the law? Even on Channel 2, I think there should be some PSA on the channel to remind citizens that it is legal to smoke marijuana at your residence, but in public facilities, public parks, 
it is prohibited. You will be arrested. Or cited. And Director Hacker, we'll, we'll do what we can, work with communications, but again, until we, we have, I think, uh, conclusive and definitive agreement from both DPS and our city attorney's groups, I'm not going to make up language in that regard. And then secondly, signs don't do any good unless we have enforcement, and so I know that DPS is going to receive more receive more officers going forward. But, yeah, by all means, we'll, we'll give it every try we, we potentially so can. Does, it, does we, do I need to go and allow the city council to get that, 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 that started directing the city attorney? See, what we do, we keep on procrastinating, and it's not getting any better. We are contributing to delinquency of minors being subject because adults don't have responsibility to not to do it in public park. Well, I, I don't want again, to direct, director, director Hacker, we, we, this group, this body, this administrative body is not contributing to the delinquency of minors, so I think that's a misstatement. But will we do what we can to inform the public? Yes, we can. Well, and, and Chairman White, um, Recognizing that uh, the commissioner has a, a passion and a frustration, um, you asked the question: Should you or could you? Uh, this this commission encourages us to work with our uh, our dignitaries and our community. So uh, I think that uh, you didn't hear any, any negative response from the director, um, and or uh, there may be some other commissioners that may want to assist you in that effort. Um, so. Uh, I understand the frustration. Point point. Commissioner Mayor. Yep, thank you. Um, just a request for, I guess, further clarification and, and procedure. Obviously, smoking it, the act of actually inviting or however you want to call it, you know, can't be done anywhere other than personal residence. But uh, what's the policy on inebriation? If, is there a sobriety test? Uh, obviously, I assume you can't be under the influence of marijuana in the park. And is that really, I mean, is that part of the issue here? Whether there's a test for that or something like that? We haven't had an arrest for being under the influence in the park. Not um, just marijuana alone. But that's illegal? Yeah, we talked about the main brand. Mm -hmm. That's not general. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. And I apologize for saying that. No, on, well, no, on park. In park areas, being under the influence of marijuana is legal. Well, if you have Commissioner White, and, and this is, I'm just taking the liberty of responding, but if you have one beer before you go to the park, the park it's not illegal to have that beer but before you, you get drunk and get arrested. If you are, the, the, the officer can answer that, but if you are intoxicated in a way that, that the uh, law can identify you, then you are DUI uh, or drunk. Disorderly, disorderly harassing. Yeah. It's usually something on top of just being inebriated. But for it to be in your system, it's a, it's a legal substance. Commissioner, um, Commissioner uh, Member Femmel, perhaps it would be good to engage the, the dispensaries as well, uh, being that it is good for their business to have their customers consume legally, maybe do an education program through the dispensaries themselves, saying, you know, it's illegal to consume marijuana in parks. That way they're getting it from the source, and perhaps that might or to curtail this problem. Thank you, Commissioner. I was privately thinking about something in that, in that same uh, area, like a brainstorming uh, with them uh, right. through some type of facilitation right. to see if they're even interested in it, and if they are, how, how committed could they be financially to some type of campaign. Exactly. If there's no further questions, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on to... Item number six, report by our Preston Parks and Recreation Senior Inclusion and Recreation Specialist Mountain regarding programs, playgrounds relating to autism, all wards. Thank you guys for having me. I think I've been here before. Um, we presented some projects before up here, but for those who don't know me, my name is Bernard Preston. Um, I work in the Adaptive Recreation Unit, and I was asked today to come talk about autism and adaptive recreation. And so. Um, I believe that uh, we're implementing some uh, playground equipment in Gilchrist Park and we've been working on a project with um, JC Park, so I'm going to talk a little bit about, about that and some of the programs that we have to offer uh, with the city in regards to working with autism. Overview, what is autism? 
before I get into that, I'm no medical expert, um, just the research and what it suggests. Uh, types of autism, what are the characteristics of autism, JC, uh, JC Park, All the Ladies Playground that we just received the grant from, uh, and how we make a difference with a kid with autism, and what we're doing uh, in our unit to uh, provide programs with individuals with autism. So what is autism? We do know it's a neurological disorder. Um, it's broad. Have, individuals have difficulties in social interaction, nonverbal communication, repetitive behaviors. Uh, in every two and six in, uh, of a thousand individuals have autism. Uh, it's not linked to uh, racial, ethnic, social boundaries, income, and it's more prevalent in boys. That's what we do know. Um, I didn't put down causes because it's really, really no one knows exactly what it's been linked to vaccines, it's been linked to food, um, but it's a lot of documentaries out there, um, but I won't be the one that's going to tell you where it's coming from. Uh, as I indicated, it in indicates, excuse me, um, you have abnormalities in brain, uh, social interaction, communication skills, uh, difficulties with uh, related individuals in the other world, aggressive behaviors. Uh, it's severe um, in regards to supply. That's why it's called the autism spectrum. So we have an after school program right now where I have an individual who uh, was my MR where they can communicate, uh, they, they know their, their surroundings, and then I have individuals profoundly disabled who um, if you interact with them or you get in their space, they're, they're really aggressive. So it's really broad. Um, so broad that the DSM-5 had to condense it. Uh, it was actually DSM-4, DSM-5 now condensed to three areas, autism disorder, Asperger's, and persuasive uh, disorder. And it's the autism uh, spectrum disorder. Autistic uh, disorder, this is the one that we talk about uh, more, uh, more, a lot, social interaction, uh, communication, imaginative play. Uh, it's usually apparent before age three. Asperger's, this is the one uh, individuals usually are gifted. Um, we actually have some programs where we work with a lot of individual Asperger's. We have a uh, work program that we're working with UNLV in the state where we have individuals go to college, and we have a few individuals who have Asperger's. So. And this one usually is individuals that they don't know which uh, disorder in, either the autistic or um, Asperger's, so they kind of the DSM-4 diagnose them with this one. Characteristics, I don't know why it came up that way, sorry. A broad range of abilities, no communi uh, verbal communication, or they have quite complex skills. Um, obsessions, tics, this is, um, in the past, for years, they used to thought Tourette's was part of autism, but they found out later that it's not. Aggressive, aggressiveness, yeah, again, like, we have students who, if you invade their space, they'll hit you, quite, quite frankly. Impaired uh, relationships, failure to uh, 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 spontaneous shared enjoyment, uh, lack of interest. I don't know why. I'm sorry about my uh, PowerPoint is going in, uh, backwards. I don't know why. Sensory processing. Um, I think uh, when they talk about the Gilchrist Park, that's some of the equipment that they're going to be implementing, and I'll talk about that with the JC Park. But usually they uh, have an inability either oversensitive or sensitive to touch, taste, uh, sound, uh, may have difficulties in loud sound or uh, lights, it just really depends. That's why autism, autism is a broad spectrum. Resistant to change. Uh, they, they're, they're very, they like nothing not to change. Predictability is huge. Uh, change can be very stressful. Um, TV shows, food, symmetry is often important. Interventions should need to focus on preparing students for change if possible. And I'll talk about a lot of that stuff later on in the slides. Intellectual function, again, this is, it's broad. You can have individuals who are um, close to moderate MR from the range from 70 to 90 to either profound MR from less IQ to 20 or 30. General, between 50 and 75% or have mental retardation. Uh, we see this in our programs. Uh, verbal and reasoning skills are difficult. So before I get into J.C. Park, um, we right now probably have in all our programs close to 70, excuse me, 50 to 70 percent of individuals with autism, and so I'll talk about that. And what are we doing as far as with the city and adaptive retribution as far as parks? Well, um, we just got awarded a grant in 2017 
uh, to implement playground structure at JC Park. Uh, here's some of the key concepts. 50-50 um, match with uh, state parks and land water conservation and variety of children charity. I want to give a special thanks to uh, John, the city, uh, the city deputy attorney. He's made things very, very easy for, for me. Um, I feel like I know him. Um, all the emails I got from him, but he made it really clean. Um, it didn't cost the city no money. Um, didn't require any, eliminate any current kind of equipment um, in the existing park. Um, when we doing the research on that, um, it's located in an area where it's 16 schools that primarily serve individuals with disabilities, four primarily serving people with disabilities, um, uh, Helen J. Stewart, Variety, uh, Miller, and Miley, all focus on individuals with disabilities. Uh, and it's adding to the current amenities already at J.C. Park. So in, in my estimate, I, I just believe it's probably one of the diverse parks that we have in the city. Um, you know, bocce courts and, you know, uh, uh, dog run, shuffle courts, all that stuff. So um, one of the things we looked at when we were coming up with the park, when we meet with the charity and the individual school, here are some of the things that parents were concerned with. Perimeter containment. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to parks where you can go out in the street and just run out. Well, J.C. Park is fenced all the way around. And so that was one of the things that we looked at. And based on percentages, autism is one of those uh, impairments where they're usually runners. Dispense play and surround play. Now, I know I put that concept in there. Most parks that are developed um, today, they usually have that concept. Some of the older parks don't. The nest it really is is having space uh, for kids with autism. They gotta be able to, if they're um, overstimulating, they better have to go to a place where they can calm down. This park provides that. I don't know if anybody in, um, familiar with JC Park, but it's a really, really big park and all that, and have those components for that. Round sensory and cause and effect um, components will be incorporated in this park, and I know they're gonna talk about it a little bit uh, in Bell Crease, but here's where the park's gonna be located. Um, this is kind of an example of surrounding path, and so the park's going to be right here. We really wanted to be around trees uh, because of the heat in, in Las Vegas. Um, and as you can see, it's right next to another park, and then on the uh, uh, right of it or left, depending on where you're at, it's a, water, a splash park. So we, we believe that it's in the perfect place in J.C. Park, and if down here is some more space, the charity is even already thinking about trying to expand and add more kids. Uh, more components, but you know we'll see after we get this one done first. Uh, it's a lot of components, a lot of a lot of hard work that's trying to get done first. So um, I know we just got the equipment purchased. Um, hopefully, you know I don't want to put a timetable in, but it should be completed by the end of the year. I'm hoping um, our parks and maintenance um, uh, guys have been really good on that. They've been we've been in communication with them. So I gotta get over here for a second to kind of. Um, show you some of the sensory cause and play components that I know that's going to be implemented in Gilcrease Park. And yeah, you can. So if you can click on, I think these two components are actually going to be in Gilcrease. So can you click on that one first? Is it blue? Yeah. This one right here. Yeah. The middle one. The middle one, yeah. This one? Yeah, this right here. Where's the second one? Yeah. Where's the second one? Yeah. I couldn't see the arrow on No worries, thank you. And again, volume up or so you can see and, and for a regular kid this is something fun but it's more a cause and effect for kids with autism again this one. So you can see just if you visual impairment. Oh, you're sorry, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's ground level, it's sensory. Now, I don't know if this is going to be a little different where we're at, but again, a kid with autism, if they're having difficulties in the swings, they can go kind of calm down and do something that they're fixated with. And it, again, it may not seem much, but it's huge for a kid with autism when they're processing the sensory. And it gives. Uh, a traditional person, uh, or excuse me, a kid with autism, something else to do. We have another slide over there. Uh, going back to that. Yeah, you can just, you can just hit, you can close out. 
And again, they vary, so we can do the, let's do the color splash one. Oh, no, 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 let's go back. Yeah, thank you. Bottom way up. It's kind of the opposite, I know, yes, yeah, kind of tricky. And I won't go through too, more too many slides because I know we got uh, things to do. So again, all these type of different sensory things for individuals in wheelchairs or individuals with autism, they could do. Um, for the coloring, you see the different coloring, so if they have processes in coloring, all that stuff's available to them. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if, they, if they're putting that at the Gilchrist Park, but I know they're doing it at uh, J.C. Park. Okay. Let's close this one up. Yeah, let's close it out. Now this will be good. Okay, and I think we went too far up. Okay, so um, the next one is typically in the kids with autism usually have balance issues. Uh, and so one of the things that we implement, I don't know if you can see from here, is this, this is like the centerpiece of the whole park. It's our integrated carousel. And this is kind of unique. It's actually the only one in Nevada right now where an individual with, uh, who's in a wheelchair is able to be able to get on that. And so um, it's pretty huge. I mean, I get, I'm getting calls from people from the county, asking where we got it at, um, North Las Vegas, pretty significant. So if you can click on that real quick, please, sir. And it still benefits kids with autism as well, but it's mainly for, for all abilities. No, this is the wrong one. I think you clicked the wrong one. I think so. And if you did, it's my mistake. So no, I will accept that. That one right there? Yeah. I'll click it again. <laughs> it must have got switched, man, because that's not. Oh, no, nah, that's not it. Okay, well, let's maybe just fast forward. Integration carousel. And that's on me. Sorry about that. You wanna? Could have been worse. Yeah, it could have been worse. <laughs> <laughs> so you can tell about That's no experience, but it, this is a different one. But here you can kind of get an example of it. So, yeah, so we can close it out. I just want to kind of give you a sample of it. Um, And this is a mega tower. Um, again, kids with autism on that spectrum, they like to climb, they like to be part of uh, activities, uh, regular kids. And again, I just really want to stress uh, it's an inclusive playground. Um, I think uh, it's the difference between being an inclusive playground and a an not accessible program because you have a lot of parks that don't have the wheelchair ramp up. Um, we didn't want to do that. We didn't want to associate a stigma to the park, so that's why we really focus on inclusiveness. Um, this is just some research when it comes to um, play. Uh, everybody should have opportunities to play depending on their ability. Um, research suggests that interaction with happen at the playground is a critical part of helping children understand what makes every person unique. And this is usually represents uh, the first time people get to play or interact with another person, especially a person with disabilities. So what are we doing with the city of Las Vegas? I think some of my colleagues have been up here before talking about this program, but this is our after school program. Uh, right now we have 50% uh, of kids with autism in that program currently. Uh, it's an after-school program. Uh, range uh, prices are anywhere from $27 to $45 a week. And we do different activities all during um, uh, the week. I think I have summer camp, sorry. Uh, School-based programs. Uh, right now we offer yoga. Um, that's uh, a program that relieves stress, especially uh, if kids with autism have high anxiety. Uh, we offer that five days a week. We offer it one at our Veterans Center. We offer it three classes at East Las Vegas. Um, and uh, the one at uh, Veterans, the class is 90% autism. Um, the four classes that we offer it um, at Variety, 75% of the students have autism. Uh, Variety, uh, their students have over 75% of autism, so we do a lot with them. Um, we have a work program right now at East Las Vegas where we have uh, kids with autism come over and make lunches um, for their teachers and serve the teachers every Wednesdays. Um, and we do a swim program for them uh, once a week. 
Any questions? Uh, Larry Schultz, Ward 6. So, Bernard, I want to say something. You must be complimented to be familiar with this, to work in this program, to help support it. But this is good work. This is perfect good work, and uh, I'm very happy to hear this, and this, that the city's doing this. Now, um, in terms, it sounds like we have some things we're about to implement, and we have other things that are already implemented. Am I right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, for the things that have already been implemented, how many attendees total do we have that come on a recurring basis that are autistic to these programs in terms of the population and how many full-time equivalents from Parks and Recreation are assigned to serve this number? Okay, so that's, two, that's a two-part question. Yes. So in regards to our programs, uh, we, again, on an average, I just go based on a week, anywhere between 75 to 100 students, uh, staff associated with that. Uh, two full-time staff and probably anywhere between two and three hourly staff. Um, and it, it's across the region. So we have uh, hourly staff that are uh, at Veterans, and then we have on the west side, and then we have hourly staff that, and full-time staff on the east side. In regards to the park, um, I can't speak on Gilchrist. I know they're going to talk about that. But the JC Park, hopefully, we just purchased equipment. Um, so we're hoping to get that implemented, I mean, anytime, at least by October. That's my guess. That's the plan. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Uh, 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 this is a really good program. And, uh, what do you do for the parents? Uh, last Saturday, I was attending the Rose of Park. Mexicano uh, Festival mm -hmm. in Nevada, PDP. They do, a, yeah, they do a lot of things for parents. They do their workshops. And uh, do you guys have that program? Yes, we work with Nevada Pet on a regular basis. We work with FEET. I don't know if you're familiar with FEET, but FEET is a, a, one of the largest organizations that work with autism. They actually um, they got a fee waiver to Parks and Rec where they do, um, they have their meetings at East Las Vegas, and they have two sections where they work with, and I hate to use, use this term, but quote, uh, individuals who speak English and individuals who don't speak English, so they have broken up in two sections. Um, and as far as outreach, uh, we're in the community. Um, I'm in the schools probably three times a week. Um, I work with Variety on a regular basis. They come to um, our program. They, I mean, we have school-based programs, so there are probably 10 to 15 programs during the week. So. And anyone's welcome to come. And we have profound I mean, we have the different range. So we have individuals who are profoundly autism, and then we have Asperger's. And so I'm very excited about um, being part of the adventure camp that uh, the city of uh, one of my colleagues started up. And adventure camp is um, they go on different activities um, uh, three times a week. But we're doing something in East Las Vegas a little different, where we're doing life skills and vocational preparation for ages 12 to 15. And so. Uh, we're doing a combination of having kids with or without disabilities. And so three of those kids have Asperger's. And so uh, in addition to that, we are uh, got an agreement from Tutoring Club of Las Vegas. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that. They're the largest tutoring organization in Nevada. They're going to be doing tutoring for our kids, um, which is, is, is huge. Um, and it's more of an enrichment program. So the goal is, so if you come in and you're going to fourth grade, well, the Tutoring Club is going to focus on getting you ready for the fourth grade. So we're putting anywhere between 30 to 40 hours, which is kind of research suggests that's a grade level. So I'm excited about that as far as working with kids with autism. Chairman White, I, and I can tell you are excited. And, uh, and we were excited to hear that you were coming this time. Thank you. Appreciate um, it. It was something that we literally uh, talked about because uh, for some of us, it touches us in our families. Uh, specifically, I have people that uh, have autism in my family. Um, so I appreciate the services that you do. Uh, is there any other questions uh, for our gentleman here? No other questions? Yeah, are you wrapping it up? I am. I'm done. And again, I want to thank you guys for your time. Again, thank you, John. I, I really appreciate it, man. You don't understand how it makes it easy. Dealing with grants, so this can be a pain. He made it real easy for me. So. No buttons? No buttons. Oh, I need to get my, my um. Oh, he wanted to. No, I'm not. Well, I was going <laughs> oh, do you want to talk about the autism stuff? Oh, yeah, it's no. already warm. Oh, okay. on, so. okay. We'll get your... Uh, we'll get I have to get my flip, flip flash rod. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah. 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 In general, it's good. So, you got to put a face to a name. I did. I realized. Thank you. I appreciate it. I remember emails. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to item number seven. Uh, they beat up a lot of time, so we're going to set a microphone. No, 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 you were great. Right, you have a little bit of time. The Department of Operations and Maintenance Department and Improvement. I'll go through it as quickly as I can. I'm giving you two handouts. The larger sheet is results of the uh, reviews of the product. We did condition inspections in accordance with the graphics we showed you. Uh, we're going to make a few modifications to what we had a few things missing, such as sidewalk signs. And so you can see the ratings in the park. Um, we're ranking from adequate to good. This is 20 parks at this location. They're there by reward along with the 10 categories in which we score them. The adjusted score, all that means is if all 10 categories doesn't apply, it's put on a 100 score point basis. So uh, the Neon Boneyard, which is not in use, and so we're rated the highest. Uh, you go down through there. Um, Ethel Pearson uh, is a difficult park, and so it's got a low score. Bruce Trent, due to the uh, tree issues, has a very low score. As we were going through this, and we will finish all of the reviews before the uh, end of the year so you have a full database, uh, we were seeing in the parks a few things we're very unhappy with. Uh, Onsan came immediately to mind in that uh, it was weedy, trashy, uh, clearly showing some signs of not adequate effort on our part. Uh, we have been short on staff uh, throughout the winter months. We had trouble hiring uh, enough maintenance workers, and so Parks has been understaffed by about 7-8%. Um, in order to address this issue, because there is a hiring chill on right now at the city, and so we know we're going to be tight next year, we're going to take some of the labor savings that occurred throughout the year with these vacancies, and we've been working overtime, and we'll continue to work overtime through the middle of June. And so over the last pay period we started, we're going into the various locations, and we're doing TLC projects. That includes picking up the trash, pulling the weeds, along with a variety of special projects, and that's the list you've got in front of you. And so um, the ones that are still bold are still yet to be done. There are a few things not mentioned on here. And so, for instance, at the upcoming Kellogg's Air Park, we've done some work on the dog park. We're going to re-turf it uh, at the bare spots. We put in a series of trees. We also put in trees uh, around benches in the center of the large cell in order to provide shade. Shade was a request, but those are an expensive unit, and so we put three 48-inch box trees around each bench in an effort to provide shade to central locations in the center cell. We're also going to put out a bulletin board, uh, and if it works well at that location, we'll put them at dog parks around the other locations. Uh, the third thing we're doing is at that location, the users had put stones out around the trees uh, to recognize their, their uh, dogs. And so we're going to implement a best friend forever amenity, and so we don't want this to be a memorial, but it'll be a BFF recognition. They will be a uh, rules board. We put uh, no curb around the trees, and those two things. One, it takes tree roots out of play. Uh, two, it makes it easier for us to mow. Three, we'll put out some uh, river rock or some large stone, and people can um, recognize their uh, canine friend uh, in the manner they would like, and so just a small cost user amenity. At Ansan Sister Park, we're going to go heavy there trying to get it cleaned up. We'll also see what we can do about the entry area. That's a very, um, the mentor is very disappointing. The parks for what it should be is disappointing, and so we're going to spend some time at Ansan. Uh, in Ward 3 at Doug Selby, we have received a very heartfelt email from one of the adjacent residences. There's a picnic pavilion. It's just near adjacent to her black wall. And it's a hangout for um, gang style activities, uh, drug dealing, drug use. Uh, it's also then got an uh, avenue of uh, ingress, egress directly into the uh, Las Vegas Wash. And so I've asked uh, concurrence from Councilman Coffin's office uh, to remove that picnic pagoda. Um, I feel um, the women's concerns have merit. 
I think it's inappropriate that we've caused her this loss of safety and sanctity in her house, and we want to remove that picnic pavilion. Uh, either way, whether we remove it or not, we're also going to put fencing in along the wash and secure that location from his easy ingress, egress from those that would like to avoid any kind of police presence. So we'll do that at uh, Doug Selby. At Lorenzi, there are a few things not mentioned here. Uh, we've taken out some turf by the ball fields. Those are drug use areas. Uh, we are extending some drainage rock uh, out into the tree areas. Uh, we'll be putting some landscape rock down around it so that these are not so inviting for that activity. Uh, at that location, uh, there's a commercial center across the block wall there. And there was a hangout on a vacant parcel. And so the individuals would stay there overnight and then climb the wall the next morning uh, and engage in, in, in proper activities in that corner of the park. We put some fencing up. Now, I couldn't put fencing the full length, and they can still crawl over the wall a little bit to the north if they would like, uh, but at least we'll make them walk. And so we'll make it harder for them to get there. Uh, if they want to crawl over the wall and come into the park and engage in these activities, we're not going to make it so inviting. We're also going to address some skateboard activities. Uh, down by the tennis court, there's a drug use area. We'll pull all the bushes out of that. If necessary, we'll fence it off. And again, um, we're not going to facilitate these activities in our park. We will discourage those activities to the avenues available to us. We are going to, at Gilcrease, uh, Councilwoman Fiore asked us to put in a piece of playground equipment, so we're putting a sensory wall in. Uh, Councilwoman did fund that out of her residential construction tax balance. Uh, that should be in in the next week or so. We will install it at that location. It's going to go in an existing playground area where we already have soft surface material and shade structure that we can take advantage of. And so it'll go out of that location. And we'll also put out a couple of decorative benches at that location, uh, which have just recently become available. As part of this review, we sent requests to the Department of Public Safety. They will have um, uh, their investigators look at Doug Selby, Doolittle, and Lorenzi, and do risk analysis of those as to what we can do to help stop uh, miscreant behavior. As part of that, we'll probably go meet with DPS. They've asked for additional signage at Lorenzi. Uh, we do need to meet with the lieutenant and the sergeants, and we will install signage. Uh, we probably need to update our large rules board uh, but that doesn't have to go everywhere. There's no reason we can't put up certain ordinances um, such as lodging. And so areas where we have overnight lodging, uh, that's a violation of municipal code. That can be enforced. And so it makes it easier for Metro or the marshals to enforce a field post. And so we will look into the marijuana issue and see if that's something we can post specific signage for. I certainly think that's something we should discourage. And we do not want to allow that to get out of hand and be trying to address it after the fact. Certainly, we'll um, check with our uh, do-it-all attorney. That would be Mr. Rodella. <laughs> and talk to him about possible signage, or, but we'll run through the city attorney's office. Uh, but we'll coordinate with public safety and um, city attorney on that. So we'll see what we can do for signage on the parks. I think it's uh, certainly that we won't... Uh, stop those who are intent on doing it, but if it discourages a small percentage, then it's worth the cost to the sign. The last time I have is uh, tomorrow after tomorrow City Council, I'll be doing a capital presentation on infrastructure, and that presentation is how the city maintains its assets, and so we do not want to be um, some larger cities that now have crumbling infrastructure, and they're in such a hole they'll never get out. Uh, we don't want to be that city. Uh, we don't have that problem yet. We have approximately over $9 billion in capital assets. We have very proactive programs on the major assets. That includes the streets, the storm drains, uh, the sewers. Uh, those have very proactive programs, and I'll show what we do on those. Uh, parks are a different issue. Uh, parks are funded on basically an ad needed basis for capital assets, uh, and we will uh, this time next year or pre before the budget next year uh, put together a listing of what we think we need for capital asset maintenance on an annual basis to make sure it gets funded. And that presentation will be on Wednesday, and um, we will have funding this year, not to the level we had before, uh, but with the city budget tightening up, I want to make sure um, if we build it, we got to maintain it. 
the shade structures fail in 10 to 12 years. The soft surfacing is incredibly expensive, as is the artificial turf, and so we want to make sure we lay out what has to be funded for maintenance of our existing infrastructure. Probably not. We had to take a 2% budget decrement, and although we love that program, uh, that's one of the things that we eliminated as part of the 2% decrement. Uh, I need to check to see if we can use labor savings to fund that. Uh, we will have labor savings this year, but the intent is not for us to spend them elsewhere, and so we'll have position freezes. Uh, I have not inquired about that as of yet. Um, we may have a crew work with the streets crew since they're a different funding source, but I don't know that we'll have the crews work with the parks again. Not this year. Certainly it's a, we thought, a very beneficial program. Would like to continue it. Oh, thank you. Chairman White, um, I've heard the uh, budget cut 3% and, and such. Is this, is this a new trend that's coming around uh, uh, for your department, and, and how is it uh, uh, being, if you can, please let us know how it's being articulated to you. Taxes, uh, uh, well, part of it is due to um, the property tax. There's a cap on how the property tax could go up. Uh, it invokes not only a 3% hard cap, but also a cap based on, I believe, consumer price indexing. And so that's the problem is that property taxes are not coming back. And so also you have some sales tax reductions due to Internet sales. And so as the economy comes back, the tax base is not coming back at the same strength. And so taxes are not going up to the manner you might think, and then those are offset by um, union bargaining agreements where salaries are rising and inflation on other projects. And so we're caught in a squeeze where our revenues are not going up at the same rate as our expenses. And I appreciate you for uh, sharing that with us. I wanted to be able to have the commissioners here at the explanation. So, uh, are there any other questions? Commissioner? Uh, Commissioner Greer, Is the work completed at Bill Park? It looks really good when you drive by it. They just had a walkthrough of uh, Rosa Cortez Park Maintenance Manager. And we expect it to be open within 30, 30 to 45 days. It yeah. looks really good. Yes, it does. Looks amazing. Thank you. Commissioner? Commissioner Greer. I'll defer to Mr. Hacker. I'm not aware of any, any current future. We did look at it for possible um, recreational play, uh, but it doesn't have the width necessary for the field, so we there. It just dawned on us maybe it would work. Uh, but I checked the dimensions. I don't think it will meet the dimensions, and I'm not aware of any current plans with the park. And uh, Director Hacker, I, there's just been a concern with the type of, of unintended user that will congregate there. I mean, it's, it's two blocks away from the corner of Hope. So um, you know, previous council has asked that that, that part be closed. Uh, with the new council member, maybe that's something that can be revisited. But again, um, access and who, you know, the, the types of unintended users has just uh, made it a very unwelcoming park for families. and. and it, it was just deemed not to be uh, suitable for use by families. That's why it was closed. And then it's it's minimal maintenance. Sure, walk. It is minimal maintenance, but we don't want it to turn into a visualized sort for the neighborhood, so it is maintained. I mean, that's uh, the reason the scores are because there's no use or some windblown trash for that, and that it was in good shape. Thank you very much.
I came early and left early. Uh, Director. <laughs> but it was a good event. Uh, another event uh, that I participated in was April 14th, and that was at Hunt Ridge Circle Park. And that was the event that was announced at the last meeting by the uh, Neighborhood Coalition from Hunt Ridge Circle Park, where they had it. it was sponsored by the Coalition, and it was also sponsored by Las Vegas Metro, where they did a full neighborhood watch presentation. And it was also well, the marshals were there and full force making sure everything was safe. And that was also done very well. And a number of the neighborhood residents showed up. So that's my report. Thank you, Commissioner. I have a report. Commissioner. Uh, through the chair, uh, I have been advised by uh, Commissioner Curdy. I've been advised by the Little League that, I mean, the uh, baseball team and the ordinary command. But the lights got cut off on the game one night. And I wanted to know, um, can I get somebody's number to call when that issue happens again? Uh, Director Hacker, the, and we definitely get that to you. The, the allocated user would have that information. And again, we, we only have the lights program for the time frames that they tell us that they don't a lot for, you know, extra innings or something like that. That's an unfortunate outcome. So uh, I'll have. Kelly send that to all of all of you in case you get that similar call. But anyone who gets an allocation would be given that information. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, is there any other commissioner reports? Uh, uh, Chairman White, can we do a fundraiser with the dunking of the uh, director at some point in the parking lot as much as <laughs> raising money and just have you dumped over and over. Director Hacker, I'll, I'll uh, see if my schedule will allow that. <laughs> it's fishing season, so we probably won't. Okay, just so, that's out of fishing. Looks <laughs> <laughs> like sale will be on to item number nine, report by Tim Hacker, Parks and Recreation Director, regarding upcoming department uh, Parks and Recreation activities off the board. Okay, I'm <clears throat> Director Hacker. Uh, Rosa Cortez did, did talk about Bill Burrow Park. It is basically done, and with the walkthroughs and whatever punch list items, we hope to get uh, coordinated a ribbon cutting with the Councilwoman's office sooner or later. We're kind of hoping in that same time frame, but uh, the park did really turn out well. If you drove by at any point in time, going out towards Summerlin or north on the 95, and saw how tore up it was, and now where it's at, it's pretty incredible what they're able to do. We also have a few uh, items. Well, on the same day, we have a parade. Well, Colorado actually starts this weekend for the actual uh, rodeo part. And then next weekend on the 12th at uh, 10 a.m. start downtown. 4th Street is probably the best viewing. Yep. Is the annual Colorado Day Parade that Kelly and others work very hard to coordinate. He sort of works with you. <laughs> Volunteer. And then um, the closing ceremonies for Corporate Challenge, yes. After so many months, we're ready to close it up. At, it's on the 12th in the afternoon. But at Kellogg's there, and there's a fun walk with the mayor. And bring your families, your dogs. And uh, if I wasn't so busy with Colorado support, I would have my two basset hounds there again. But they won't be there this year. So show up for that. That's 1 o'clock at uh, Kellogg's there, May 12th. And I think that's it. Thank you. Um, after, um, any questions? Yeah. 